Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today we're looking at how to make our bathrooms safer. I'm Andrea Salmon from MS and I'll be the facilitator of today's webinar and I've got Peter Simpson online to be introduced in just a moment. We start all our programs with an acknowledgement of country and in the spirit of reconciliation, MS Limited acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. As I said, Peter Simpson is our presenter today, and it's our first presentation with Peter and his team. Peter works for Assistive Technology Australia, got to get that right. And Peter's recently finished his Certificate 4 in Assistive Technology Mentoring. And he's previously completed other courses in peer support and in creating accessible environments. He was also president of the Physical Disability Council New South Wales for many years and has a strong background in systemic advocacy. So it's our honour and pleasure really to have Peter with us today to talk to us about ways to keep our make and keep our bathrooms safe. So Peter, I don't know if you would like to put on your camera and say hi, and then I can turn mine off as well, and I'll hand over to hi. you. Hi everybody, thanks Andrea. Hi everybody. Um, I hope, um, I'm glad you could all join in today and, and, and looking at, uh, we're looking at how to make my bathroom safer. And I hope you get a lot out of today. And as Andrea said, we'll have a period for questions at the end. So if you have any questions about anything I'm going to present to you today, just jot them down and uh, we'll get to those at the end. That's so, great. Um, I'm going to turn my start. camera off now, but, but I'm still here in the background. So I'll just start off with a little bit about Assistive Technology Australia and what we actually do here. Um, we're actually an information service that provides advice on assistive technology solutions for independent living. Um, we provide expertise through um, concentration, consultation training and also we have a catalogue of resources which you can um, go to our website and, and have a look at and download. Um, we're also a registered training organisation as well. So, um, so that's just quickly a little bit about what we do here at City Technology Australia. Um, we'll just go on to our next slide. So, um, my um, my role. My role as an AT mentor is basically I'm somebody with a lived experience of having used assistive technology um, and I, su I, I provide support to others in making informed choices about their assistive technology needs and what they think you know, they may require or what might, might assist them in their daily living. Um, and also all my advice is impartial. So obviously not connected with any suppliers or I don't have a, um, a you know, one particular um, piece of AT over another. I just provide impartial advice on, um, on everything that is out there for people. Um, so with our next slide, um, we'll look at, so today we'll be looking at um, the importance of having adequate lighting in the bathroom um, and how that provides a safe environment. We'll also be looking at how sensors can use to automate bathroom lighting, um, especially at night when people are getting out of bed and having to get to the bathroom rather and not having to turn a light on. Also selecting the right flooring, so selecting the right surface for your bathroom. Um, as we know, bathrooms can be can be a bit of a trip hazard at the best of times, let alone when they're wet. So we'll be looking at that. Also grab rails for safe mobility. So how grab rails can help us in the bathroom, where we can install them and um, how they can help us in that regard. And also how shower seats and stools can help when showering. Um, if we have issues with, you know, we're having to sit down while we shower rather than standing up the whole time. 
So we'll look at those sort of things as well, as well as a few uh, discussing a few other things as well. So our next slide. Why my bathroom needs to be safe. So uh, many accidents occur in the bathroom. In actual fact, um, um, the bathroom is actually one of the most dangerous rooms in the home for accidents. Um, so it's obviously quite important that, that we, we look at. So um, the accidents in the bathroom usually occur due, due to slipping and falling on wet surfaces, um, unable to keep our balance when performing tasks like showering or um, going to the toilet or even standing at the sink and um, brushing our teeth and things like that. Um, so, we'll, so today we will look at ways to minimise um, accidents and make life easier in the bathroom for you. So our next slide. So firstly, we'll look at lighting. So um, firstly, when we're looking at lighting and we're looking at how our bathroom is actually being used. So we need to, one of the first things we need to consider is if our bathroom is actually being shared by other people or we are the only one using it. So um, what I mean by that is that um, remembering that, that other people will have their, their bathroom and their equipment in the shower as well as us. So things like, um, um, you know, if, if you share a bathroom with somebody that le tends to leave clothes out all over the floor or tends to leave things on the floor, that can be a trip hazard for us, particularly, especially if we had trouble walking or um, we use a walking stick or something like that. So just um, making sure that we keep the floor um, clear of items as well, as particularly as I said, if we're sharing the bathroom with somebody else, we're living, we're living in, um, in a home with somebody else. So making sure that, that, that they also understand your requirements and the need to, to keep the bathroom clean, keep things off the floor. Um, and make things better for us. Um, so, and also, uh, so um, um, ensuring the bathroom is well lit, especially at night. So, um, um, generally, um, bath, um, because of the hazards that can occur in the bathroom, we need to ensure that our bathroom is always well lit to its, its maximum capacity. And particularly, especially if, um, you're somebody with a, a lower level of vision or you know, um, you're a little bit older and your, 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 your vision is starting to go. So we, we need to ensure that that bathroom is being well lit um, because our eyesight generally, generally starts to decline at, at around about 40 years of age onwards. Um, so, um, um, so we need to ensure that that bathroom is well lit. Um, also, some people may, lead, may need more light to see well than others. So the amount of lighting that you will require in your bathroom will be an individual thing. Um, um, and, 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 and the amount of lighting that makes you feel the most comfortable. Um, the um, also, the loco lo location of lights in the bathroom um, will depend upon the size of the bathroom um and the overall space in the bathroom so um when we're looking things for example which we'll look at in in um in a couple of slides coming we'll read the thing the use of led lights for example led lights are generally the most powerful provide the most powerful light source um and they're also quite um economic as well and cost effective so um Things like LED lights, making sure that they're, they're well spaced within the bathroom. Um, and again, you might might want to get a bit, bit of advice around that as well as to where you space out your lighting. Um, and that the lighting should cover the whole bathroom, should light up the whole bathroom. So um, not just the shower end or the toilet end or where the sink is, the whole, the entire bathroom um, should actually be well lit. So we'll go to our next slide now. Um, so I've just included a couple of references here. 
uh, references here that I found that are actually good resources. So the first one is actually a light bulb buyer's fact sheet. So it's a fact sheet that actually talks about what sort of um, lighting is um, recommended for what for different types of rooms of the house and how that lighting should be um, should be um, spread out and the best configuration to actually light, light your bathroom. Um, also the second one which is a um, uh, from the light um, will actually help choose bulbs that are bright as well. So the, the second one is a um, is a brightness recommendations guide. So it will talk about um, which sort of lights and bulbs will last longer and also to a cheap to run because I know a lot of people um, comes down to price as well. Not only the price of a particular product, but also things like how the, the price that can have effect on utilities, things like power bills um, and things like that. So there's a couple of, of reference sheets there, that, the resources that you might want to um, have a look at. Um, just go to our next slide now which as I spoke about a minute ago, we're talking about sensor lighting. So sensor lighting is good, for example, where you're entering a room and the lighting will come on automatically. So um, that's particular, particularly good in the situation where you, you're somebody that may frequent the bathroom a few times at night um, and your bar, your, for example, if you don't like to have your hallway um, light permanently on, for example, so you can get to the bathroom. Um, as soon as you enter the bathroom, sensor lights will come on for you. Um, so there, um, the way sensor lights works, they're actually um, LED bulbs, um, and they're actually and they're actually quite cheap, and they last um, they last much longer than regular light globes as well. So obviously they're activated by motion. So as soon as you enter the room, um, um, the lights will, will come on for you. Um, also having sensor lights is also an energy saving, works as an, and works as an energy saver as well, for example. So now you don't need to, for example, keep the bathroom light on all night. Um, I know a lot of people that, that, that they sort of they'll leave the bathroom light on and sort of close the door and sort of leave it half a jar so that the light sort of comes into um, the corridor or um, the hallway. So um, that sort of provides a little bit of, of an alternative to that. Um, and um, with the sensor globes, they will a lot of them will actually won't require any rewiring or any more fitting to your lights. So you can actually get sensor light globes that will actually just screw into the standard light fitting, um, for example. So that, that's how they're sort of cost, cost effective. Um, also too, um, with these, um, you could also look at, for example, something like smart, smart sensor globes, which for example, you can use um, to voice command your lights, for example. So you might be able to connect them to Alexa, for example, um, or um, Google Nest or something like that. If, you're, if you've got a home that you like running a lot of automated appliances off, you can also do that with your lights. So for example, um, Alexa, could you please turn, or Alexa, turn the bathroom light on, and that will turn the bathroom light on for you. So that's another alternative as well. It's also a good alternative for people that might have have um, issues with their hands, and um, like like I do, as you can see, um, I have I've, I've, um, issues with um, functions in my hands. So, um, so that may be a good way of, of of automating that. For example, rather than having to get bigger light switches or something like that. So that. Um, that, um, that voice automation is definitely a, a something you, you, you may want to look at. So we'll look at our next slide. Um, so uh, when we're looking at general sensor lights that, that, are, that, are, that, as I just said, you can sort of purchase and that are cheap to purchase in most sort of, in most sort of stores like Bunnings and things like that. 
Um, you can also get them with the time, you can also get time delay motion sensor lights, which for example, rather than a sensor light, which will turn on when you enter a room um, and then will turn off when you leave a room. The only thing with that is that, for example, um, after, after potentially maybe about 30 seconds to a minute of you not moving, the light may actually go out on you, in which case you need to, um, you need to, to move again to turn that light back on. Um, where that could be an issue, maybe something like, for example, you're, um, you're sitting on the toilet and that's often a place where we're not moving very much. Um, and I know, for example, when I go to a lot of um, shopping centre toilets, for example, and motion sensors, and I'll be on there sitting on the toilet and the light will go off on me and I'm waving my arms around and things like that to get the lights, the lights back on again. So um, um, time delayed motion sensor lights is an option as well. However, these type of lights need to be hardwired into the, into the electrics of the house. So obviously that will require an electrician to install, but your standard sensor lights is, is um, quite cheap and, and easy to purchase. So we'll look at our next slide. So now we'll look at flooring. Okay, so when we're looking at flooring, we want to, um, first of all, we want to look at the selecting the tile surface that is easy to clean keep clean and is grease resistant. So one of one of the if you for example if you've already got a tile floor that, that that's quite slippery and um and you don't necessarily you aren't necessarily in a situation where you can replace your whole toilet floor. You know we want to ensure that it's kept clean. As I said before, things are things are not left on the floor. For example, leaving our clothes on the floor and items on the floor that we may be able to trip over. So, um, so ensuring that, that, that our flooring is clean at all times. Also, um, also if you've got shiny tiles, never polish them, as polishing tiles actually creates a slippery surface. So we need, we, um, so a lot of people will sort of, Cleaning them is fine, so cleaning your floor with general cleaning products, something like that, but never using like a, a product that will actually polish them and shine them up because that will actually create more of a, a slippery surface for us, particularly with larger tiles, um, um, particularly if we've got larger tiles. Um, so ideally when we're looking at the the um, the best floor tile surface for us, we've got to with um, we should be looking at surfaces surfaces impervious to water and will be slip resistant when wet. So what I mean by that is is there's there's flooring out there which we call which we call vitreous tiles, which are actually high dense ceramic tile, um, which are preferred and, and what they are is they actually have a um, they actually have a bit of a sandpaper sort of finish to them and provide a little bit of a grip. And what they will actually do is they'll actually repel water. Um, so they won't necessarily hold the water in one particular tile. They'll absorb a little bit of it, um, of, of the water and actually sort of push it along the tile surface. So it won't, it won't, it won't sort of hold the water in one spot on one tile and they're actually more slip resistant. And as I said, impervious to water. Um, um, the, other, the other thing too is just generally is, is that small tiles usually provide extra slip resistance, mainly because as you can see on, on the photo, on my slide, the photo on the top, the top right hand photo, they're smaller tiles. Um, and as you can see, the reason why they provide extra slip resistance is there's more, more surface of the grout. Um, so it's it's the grout in between the tiles that actually provides a slip resistance as well. Um, so that's why sort of smaller tiles with a with a more area of grout tend to provide a greater slip resistance. Um, um, also as well, also that um, the um, the other photo there on the right on the on on the bottom of the part 
on the bottom of the side as well, as you can see, is a raised tile as well. So as you can, as you can see, in where, where the ground would go in between the tiles is actually hollowed. hollowed. So the, the tile actually sinks quite upright um, and provides that little bit of, bit of a rougher sort of surface as well. Um, so I'll just move on to our, our next slide. So the other option we have too, where we may not be able to um, change our our um, our, um, our tiles. So for example, we'll pull our tiles up and put a new surface down. You can. There's actually products out there that will actually provide a slip resistant coating that you can actually apply to the existing floor. So what it is, it's a layer. It's it's a sort of a lacquer. If 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 you want, if that might be the best word to use, that will that will create a finish over the top of the tiles. So on that picture that I've got at the top there on the right hand side, there's a before, on the left hand side, there's a before and the right hand side being after. The uh, slip resistance coating being applied and you can see that it just provides, it, it not only looks a little bit different, but provides a more of a, more of a rougher surface. So what I've done is I've actually added a link which is a, a link to one of those flooring products. This is actually on our website. So if any anyone's interested in looking at that, that for for coating, coating stuff, I've added that that link there for you um, on the slide we're currently looking at. Um, the other thing too is is that we might want to look at as well is is shower and bath mats, which are often a, a low a low cost solution particularly in the shower and in the bath as well, but we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, but um, so that might be, uh, again, an, an something else that's cost effective, um, where we may not be in a position to, to change our flooring, or for example, we're living with somebody else and we, we just can't do that, it's not our home. A lot of people have trouble, you know, just can't make, make big modifications to their bathroom or their home because it's a shared house or they're renting or something like that. So we need to look at sort of low, co um, low cost and easy easy to use sort of AT. So bath mats can be sort of used as well. Um, um, just remembering that the bath mat is secure, that whatever bath mat you choose, that it's always secure to the floor and doesn't slide. Um, not all bath mats, are good for all surfaces. So we need to make sure that whatever bath mat, mat we select, it's, it's going to be good for, um, for the surface that we require to, 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 be, um, to be standing on, for example, um, and that it provides good stability for us um, and a good surface. So we'll just look at our next slide now. So the other option that we've got too is non non uh, non slip strips. Um, so as you can see in the photos, they're actually strips that are actually you you buy them you buy them in a roll or buy them in a sheet. Um, you can buy them from most hardware stores or uh, um, Bunnings sell them shops like that. And what they'll actually do is, as you can see, they're actually strips that you stick to the floor. Um, so as you can see by the top picture, that's somebody entering and exiting the shower. Um, um, so it can be used again, you know, exiting or entering the shower or even in the shower. And the bottom picture too shows that they can also be used in a bath. Um, in a situation where somebody needs to stand in the bath to, sh um, to shower, for example, if, you're in, if you have a bathroom where the shower is actually above the bath and you need to stand in the bath. So that can provide a, a bit of a slip resistance surface for you. Also while sitting in the bath, as well as using a bath mat in the bottom of the bath, you can also use slip resistance strips as well, even when you're sitting. Um, so also do, I've added a, um, so, um, See, I've also added a reference to a slip resistance guide, which is actually from the building, directly from the Building Codes of Australia website, which talks about 
the different types of sleep resistance and 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 the different situations where one sleep resistance might be might be um might be better for a particular surface than another. So that's another reference that you may want to have a look at. Have a look at. Um, so now we'll move to we'll move to grab rails. So um, a lot of people. I, you know, a lot of people come in here to Assistive Technology Australia and I get a lot of emails about, you know, how what's the best way to use a, a grab rail or or what's the best grab rail option option um, option for me. So um, generally grab rails would provide, um, you, you, you install them to provide support and stability when, uh, when entering and exiting the shower. For example, um, or while you're in the shower as well, and while you're in the shower as well. So um, when we're looking at grab rails, they they will come in um, they will come in various configurations. As you can see in this photo, so you can have a short one, which is the bar on the bar at the bottom on the, on on the furthest right hand side. That's a short little curb grab rail. We've also got We've also got a long 90 degree grab rail, which goes around the corner. So it comes in under the shower and then goes around to that other wall as well. And also, also the rail that the handheld shower is on. Um, that's actually a grab rail as well. But just keeping in mind when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at installing a handheld, um, a handheld shower hose, for example, not all of the rails that the um, that the shower head will sit on and go up and down. Not all of them are weight bearing grab rails, so always keep that in mind when you're purchasing a handheld shower hose. Whether it be whether it be you're getting installed from installed from the builder or whether you go to somewhere like Bunnings and purchase one yourself. Purchase one yourself. Always always um, always find out whether whether that grab rail is weight bearing or not. Because um, um, a number of those a number of those handheld shower houses are only put on cosmetic rails, which are only um, attached to the tile. So things like that we need to be care careful of as well. Um, so the other things that a grab rail is good for is um, 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 to assist transfer onto a shower seat or a stool as well. So using that to help us whether whether it's a, a stand to sit or a sit to stand transfer or whether you're whether you're in a wheelchair for example and doing us doing a sliding transfer from say your wheelchair to a commode or to a shower seat or stool um, that um, that grab rail there again gives us stability when when doing those sort of tasks um, and again, when attaching the grab rail, we need to install. We need to ensure that that's attached into into a solid concrete wall or through the beam or through the um, the actual beam of the wall. So um, I always suggest that people don't people never people don't um, install grab rails themselves and actually get get a, a professional um, a builder or a handyman or somebody like that. To install the grab rail for you, just to ensure that that it actually goes through the wall at the um, at the best point and provides that weight bearing stability for you, and it doesn't come out of the wall, for example, when you push down on it. Um, we can also look at grab rails that have a uh, a slip resistant finish, so you can buy grab rails that have various finishes on them. For example, you've, the, the main one you'll probably see, which is what you see in most um, public toilets, is the stainless steel grab rail. Um, there, um, some of those can be can be quite slippery, especially uh, when your hands are wet, for example. So we can, there's grab rails on the market that will have different finishes. We can also get rubber, grab rails that are rubber coated, for example. And provide a bit of a, a rubber finish and a bit of a grip. Um, we can also look at. There's also grab rails that will, will have a bit of a rough surface to them, um, so that they're not as slippery. So grab rails can come in many shapes, sizes, and also materials as well. Um, 
and with grab rails too just just always make sure that you check on them and make sure that you, they, you regularly clean them so there's no build up of, of scum and grease like you get on like 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 you would with your tiles make sure you clean them re regularly just just to maintain to make sure they maintain that slip resistance when you need them and also to just continually check them for that that they main, that they maintain their secure on the wall, for example, and that and that, that there's no rust or anything like that. While most while while uh, you know while grab rails will be for the most part will be will be um, waterproof and, and water resistant. You know we still need to check things like the connections to the walls and things like that that can maybe get a little bit of rust on them over time. So just just maintain. Ma Making sure that we maintain our grab rails um, so that they're in a good working order. Um, with our next slide, Peter, can I ask you a question about grab rails before we move on? Yep. Yep. Christine has asked about your opinion on grab rails that she's seen advertised that are suction grab rails. Function grab rails. Suction. So they only suction to the oh, wall. Oh, suction grab rails. Suction grab rails, actually, that's a really good question. And, and suction grab rails is uh, something that I don't usually recommend, um, mainly because they can lose suction. And, and depending on the surface that you're, um, that you're connecting it to, for example, and the type of tile um, as well, um, I don't, I, it, sometimes they can't always provide a um a secure a secure surface and 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 for the grab rail um you never know when they're going to lose suction and things like that some sometimes if they get a bit wet or get a little bit of water behind and make use a little bit of suction so um my recommendation and my suggestion around that is to all is to i i don't outright recommend them but i always tell people that if they want to look at that option they need to be very careful and make sure that that's the right product for them if you're if certainly if you're somebody who may be a, a, a maybe a larger person and 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 and, and is a little bit heavier than, than, than most people i certainly i definitely wouldn't look at anything like that because you're, you're you're putting more weight down on the grab rail, but yeah, it's something that I'd be very cautious about, and I don't I don't outright, outright recommend those sort of grab rails. Thank you. Where are we? Okay, so now we'll look at folding folding shower seats. So um, folding shower seats, as you can see by our uh, pictures on the right hand side, are, are wall mounted shower seats. Uh, are a wall mounted option. So. Similar to a grab rail, they, they they need to be attached to the not only through the need to be attached through the beam or the stud wall as well. So need need, need to be professionally installed. Um, so they're a folding self-draining slip resistant seat. So they will um, similar to a shower seat. They will probably generally have holes or something in them for drainage for the water, and they'll be of a similar material to a um to a shower seat and you can get timber ones as well like you see on the, the picture at the bottom also to the one on the top as you can see has legs as well for added stability with with um uh with um with uh, rubber rubber guards on the bottom to, to, to stop the seat sort of moving around um so these sort of seats um, you need to obviously install in a height location, which is good for you. For example, at a height and a location where you can easily reach the handheld shower hose or um, the where you where you keep your um, shelf, where you keep your shampoo and things like that. So it needs to be installed and where you can reach everything that you may need while you're in your shower. Uh, um, also, these, start, the, these sort of seats, as you can see, don't usually have folding arms or um, or rails. Um, you can you can actually get them in, 
you can, can actually get rails installed to the wall as well, which will actually fold down independent of, of, of the shower seat. But generally a seat like this, is, as you can see, has no back support. So you're, you're literally leaning against the tiled wall and certainly has no side, side support. So generally for um, a seat like this, you need to have very good balance and very good core, core stability. Um, so that you don't fall sideways, um, may fall off the seat and things like that. So generally, you need to have a lot of good upper body strength and function to be able to use a seat like this, for example. Um, so now we'll look at a shower. Now that now we'll look at a shower seat um, and a stool. So as you can see there, um, the the difference between a shower seat and a stool is a stool generally has no back on it. So it's 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 generally just a stool with 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 a couple of short little armrests. Um, so these type of options are generally made from water from um, from um, water and rust proof material. So it might be a hard plastic or a polymer or something like that. Um, and they will come with backrests, a variation of backrests and arms. So um, generally with the shower seat, you can buy them, for example, with different 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 arms that will be you can buy some with that don't have any arms if you want a shower still with no arms they can buy buy them with quite short arms or you can have them quite high as that picture on on, on the top shows um, um, so these these type of these type of shower seats and stools are generally better for somebody who is ambulant so who walks and he's doing a stand to sit um, transfer, for example, where you can you can approach the seat from the front um, and use the handles to the grab rails on the side to lower yourself down. Um, these type of um, seats, because of the the permanent and the fixed um, the fixed side rails, are generally no good for somebody, for example, who's in a wheelchair who will do a sit to sit transfer because as you can see, because of the handles, you can't get beside the seat to do a um, to do a side to side transfer because of those those armrests. So um, um, unless unless you're somebody in a wheelchair who's quite active who could actually manage to do a front on transfer sit to sit transfer there. Um, but generally the, Generally, um, these type of options you won't be able to do a side-on sit-to-sit transfer. So, for somebody who is who is a walker or who is ambulant, this is a, this is a good option for. Also, they're cost-effective as well, um, and you can pick up shower stools from anywhere. I think Bunnings sell them. Um, some um, chemists sell them, for example, and you can buy them quite cheap online. Um, so, these are quite a good. Good, a good option and you won't necessarily need an OT assessment or a script for, even though you may want to, you may want to seek um, um, that health assistance, um, but you don't necessarily need to. You can buy these off the shelf generally. Um, the other thing too with these options, as you can see with the legs, is it probably shows up more on the bottom picture, but each leg um, can be individually adjusted. Um, so you get the, the height of the legs can be adjusted independently. So where this is good, for example, is that um, nobody will have a bathroom floor or shouldn't have a bathroom floor that is dead flat, for example. So that's where you could adjust, for example, if where you want to sit your shower chair, the, um, the back of the shower might be a little bit higher than the front. So what you might do is you might adjust the back legs a little bit higher than the front legs, for example. So most shower seats and stools come with that sort of adjustability function as well, of being able to adjust the legs independently. Um, also, they're easy to clean. These options are, are quite easy to clean and will, la will, generally, last, will generally last quite a while. Um, again, um, you want to be constantly checking them that 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 there's no build up of rust anywhere or that there's that there's still um, maintain 
that they're still maintaining their integrity for you. Like with any piece of equipment, you know, just keep checking it regularly, cleaning it, making sure that it's still in good working order. Okay, move to our next slide. So what we're looking at here is just a general picture of a bath. And this is this is actually a really good bathroom, really nice big bathroom with everything spread out. So I'll just go through, I'll just go through a few, few things in, in, in this bathroom. So um, the, one of the first things we can see is that we have level entry into the shower recess with no hob. Um, um, so which, which is um, handy for everybody, not just people that, uh, not just those that are in a wheelchair, but also those that are walking as well. You know, we like to have a nice flow um, into our shower from our, from our toilet and from the other areas of the bathroom as well. And there's nothing for us to have, having to walk over or, or, or anything, anything like that to slip as well. Um, so it's a nice big open plan bathroom. Um, you can see the shower has two uh, has two fixed walls uh, with no with um, with no fixed shower. So we've got the the handheld shower hose on the rear there, and and with having two fixed walls, the one at the back and the one on the side, we can easily enter the shower from the front, and there's nothing obstructing us there. Um, also, too, we can. Um, also having an open shower like this as well also gives us more flexibility. For example, if we have support workers or carers that help us shower, now there's enough room for, for, for somebody else to come into the to a shower and, and help us out and, and things like that. It's nice and big for everybody to be able to utilize. Um, provides that greater sort of flexibility. Also too, with the floor, as we, as we can see, we have a center single drain on the floor and that the floor will be sloped um, as where that cursor is. As you can see, the floor will be sloped um, generally to that drain. So we should not have a shower floor that is dead flat. We should be always sloping um, towards the drain, whether we have one single drain or there's also a drain in the shower, as we can see as well. So that floor won't be dead flat either. Um, also, um, also you can see we also have a strip drain installed in the shower as well, which is where yeah where the, the cursor is there. So the strip drain is just a long, a long narrow drainage grate, which allows again allows more water to um, to drain out of that shower. Um, as well as having the single one in the shower as well. So um, those those um, those draining options are really good as well, um, especially if we're somebody, you know, in the shower where we might, uh, we might, I know using a handheld shower hose, I know for me, uh, you know, I tend to drop it, I can tend to drop the shower hose or, you know, spray around a bit. So just having that longer strip chain and just ensures we get a little bit more water off that floor and that we're not spraying other areas of, water's not going to other areas of the bathroom that we don't necessarily want it to. Um, and also, so if we ever look at the curtain, um, this curtain's a little bit short, but um, you can get, you can get um, floor length curtains, which will actually, um, curtains that will actually touch the floor and we'll stop water coming under the curtain as well. Um, which will, be, and a lot of those curtains will actually be weighted at the bottom. So the bottom of the curtain might have a couple of weights in it or something a little bit heavier that will, that will weigh the curtain down and ensures that, that the curtain stays straight and doesn't sort of crinkle up. Um, the other thing that I, I, I with the shower curtain that I want to um, talk about as well is that um, um, sometimes people can have a tendency, for example, if they're falling, so whether it be falling off a shower seat or they're standing up and they're falling, um, a lot of people might have the tendency to grab the curtain 
for example, there's no shower, there's, there's no rail nearby, the rail's out of reach, and they might just in panic grab the curtain um, and for stability. Um, so uh, that's another thing you need to be careful of. So um, you need to you, you need to make sure that the cow that the um, that the curtain is actually on a fixed shower rail. So as you can see here, that the, the, the rail that the curtain is on is actually fixed on both so on both walls. Um, and again, that will be that will generally be um, be screwed into the beam as well, and not just surface mounted to the tiles. Um, because if it's if you if it's surface mounted to the tiles, as soon as you put any way on the shower curtain, it will just come out of the wall. So that needs to be adequately um, um, fixed to fixed to the wall as a, as a grab rail would be as well, um, fixed to the reinforced wall as well. So um, so yeah, that that's sort of something I'd like to talk about as well. As you can see here with the with the toilet as well, um, we've got the grab rail, we've got a, a 90 degree continuous grab rail beside the toilet as well um, for support. Again, this. Um, this picture is, is predominantly of a um, of, of a larger bathroom, but the um, that grab rail configuration you can have you can have it out however you like. It doesn't have to be continuous like that. Um, you may you may want to have a little grab rail at the rear of the toilet on the, on the side of the toilet as well um, for stability. The, depending on how you like to transfer onto your toilet, for example. It's a little bit smaller here, but where on with this with this toilet as well, you can see the the um, toilet roll holder, which is on the wall there. That is actually that is actually um, um, that is actually a weight bearing toilet roll holder. So um, that toilet roll holder, like 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 a grab rail, is actually fixed straight through to the wall as well. So if you need to, you can use that particular toilet roll holder um, as a grab rail as well to push down on. Um, most toilet roll holders, standard toilet roll holders that you buy, for example, like Bunnings and places like that, will just stick, will just mount to the tile, will just stick to the tile, which means that you, you apply any, and they're just there to hold the toilet roll. So if you apply any weight to them, they'll snap off. So um, um, something like that is worth considering as well, whether you need your, your toilet roll holder to be weight bearing as well, for example. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Um, so we'll move to our next, oh, sorry, sorry, just staying on that slide, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we, we, I was briefly talking about bars, the bath as well. So. When we're looking at the bars, I actually couldn't find an adequate um, photo that I wanted to, to show with the bars, but I'll, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll explain it well enough for you. So when we're looking at grab rails in bars, we need to look at, firstly, what is the function of your bar? So um, are you somebody that actually, um, the bath is actually in the bathroom, but for example, it, the shower, might be above the bath. So you might need to stand in the bath um, to actually have a shower and you don't actually utilize the bath for bath purposes. So when we're looking at things like that, we need to look at, okay, now do we need to install a grab rail on the wall, on, on any of the walls surrounding the bath? So um, in relation to that, we would look at the installation the same as the shower grab rail or a beside the toilet grab rail. So we would look at, you know, ensuring that it's at the appropriate height for us, um, um, because a a, a, um, a grab rail at the wrong height is is quite impractical, quite impractical, and is not functional for us. So we need to look at that and the placement of, of the grab rail as well. Um, so as we were looking before, you know, another option for your bath is a, um, a bath mat. 
So having a bath mat in the bath, if you're somebody that has trouble, you know, sitting in the bath, I know that some baths can actually still be quite a bit slippery once you put water in them. So things like sitting on a bath mat, uh, for example, if you like to sit in the bath, actually have a bath, um, you know, um, you can use like a bath mat. But as I said before, making sure that the bath mat works well with the bath and it actually sticks to, to and provides that provides that surface for you, um, provides that slip resistance. The other thing we can look at too is bath boards and transfer benches. So for example, the um, bath boards are, bath boards are, are actually what, what a bath board does is it's actually like a plank style board that actually sits across the top of the bath. And so you can actually you can actually sit on. So they're actually good for those um, above bath showers as well. If we don't want to actually sit in the bath, we can actually sit on a bath board on top of the bath, for example. So that might be a good good way of, of sort of, of of standing to sit as well. So ensuring that we're standing beside the bath. We may even, for example, have a bath mat outside the bath as well, as well as in, inside the bath as well, so that we it gives us, it gives us that slip resistance getting in and getting out of the bath as well. So, you know, things like bath boards and transfer benches, again, eliminates the stepping over the bath edge to get into the bath, whereas we can just sit on, we can just sit on the, um, on the actual bath board or the um, or the transfer bench that, that's sitting inside the bath. Um, okay, so we'll just go to our next slide. So I get a lot of questions from a lot of people on that. Uh, you know, I, I need a I need a, a big bathroom modification, but I can't afford it. You know, what are my funding options? So. We've looked at a few funding options here, and I've included a lot of. Uh, we've included some state, different state government equipment funding organisations as well, because many of you, again, will be from outside New South Wales. So, the the you know one of them is the NDIS, for example. So, for those of you that are on the NDIS, that is a it is a um, a funding model as well. Um, Again, you must be an a, a NDIS participant to sort of look at that option. Um, also, too, we've got the, the DVA, which is the Department of Veterans Affairs. So, if if you if you're a gold or, or or white card DVA member, they have a, a, a home mod modification scheme, uh, assistive technology in that as well, and also a number of of, of the state you know, here in New South Wales. We've got Enable New South Wales. You know, in, in Victoria, you've got SWEP, um, Tasmania, you've got ta TAS Equip, and um, in the ACT, you've got ACT, uh, the ACT Equipment Scheme. So while I don't know a lot about a lot about the, the, um, these other schemes, they're, they're an option for you to um, get in contact with them if you have any issues around funding, funding or assistive technology or your, um, your, your bathroom or house mods as well. So um, I've just there, there's some options there for you, which you, you may want to Google if you want to um, contact any of those. So here, what I've done here is I've just put some, I've just added some useful resources for you guys to have a look at. Um, so the first one is is the um, Home Modification Clearinghouse website. And the link that I've put here is um, a consumer fact one of their consumer fact sheets on um, home modification. So they talk about what things to look at when you are you want to do home modifications, not just the bathroom, but anywhere else in the house as well. So that's a good resource. Also the DIY modify um, fact sheet as well from the same website looks at things to consider when choosing and installing grab rails. Um, as well, and also the of the also included the livable housing design guidelines, um, which looks at which looks at the introduces people to the different levels of 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 um, of the housing design um, 
for an existing home and also if you're building your own home as well. So that's, that's um, there's some three useful resources there that you guys might want to have a look at at your own leisure. And then just our final slide. I'll just um, want to thank you guys for, um, for being able to present today and hope that you got a lot out of it. Um, um, if you have any concerns, um, the one thing I just do want to say is that then anything we've spoken about today, if you've got any major concerns or, or issues on, on your level of function and specifically what type of equipment you need, I, I will always recommend talking to a health professional such as, such as an occupational therapist and get their sort of their clinical advice as well before before sort of purchasing a lot of purchasing a lot of that a lot of that um, a lot of that main assistive technology and the stuff that may need to be to be modified in your home. Um, and, and they will be able to direct you on the most suitable options after having assessed you, your individual requirements. Um, if you need further advice also too, you can contact us, us here at Assistive Technology Australia. We have an info line service which deals with phone calls and also emails. So you can either call us directly or send us an email to our details there. And again, on any type of assistive technology, we will get back to you. Um, we um, or we all also too. We actually have an on-site display apartment here at our at our offices here at Blacktown. Which again, if you you want to come and have a look at, you can contact us by a by phone or email and book an appointment to come in here. We have it's a one-bedroom apartment that's set up here, so we've got we've got a bathroom, a living room, and a kitchen with all different high adjustable benches and beds and and things like that for you to come and have a look at. So that's a good option. We, however, we're based here in New South Wales. So um, so that's mainly for, we're here in Sydney. So if anyone who lives in New South Wales or anyone from the state that's in town wants to drop in, just, just let us know and you can come and have a look. Also, um, all of the products we spoke about today and more uh, can be viewed on our website. Um, we have a comprehensive database of AT products on our website. Um, but I will, I, I will just add as well that as an information service, we don't actually sell any of the products that are on our website. But as you go into and have a look at the product, we, for each product, we have a list of suppliers that you can contact directly for further inquiries or um, to purchase any of the products as well. So we don't actually sell products as well, which is an information service. So. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for me, and, and um, I'd like to thank you guys for um, allowing me to speak to you today, and um, and I hope you got a lot out of it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. That's been great. I'm just going to give people a little bit of um, uh, lead time to type in some questions. There's a couple sitting there waiting. But just that reminder, too, that another point of contact for support is MS. You might want to call the MS Connect line. You might want to talk to other people living with MS about what they've done around their bathroom. And that might be through peer support. Or maybe you want to tap into some of our occupational therapy services through the NDIS. That's another option there as well. So don't forget that absolutely contact AT Australia, but also use MS Connect. Just a reminder that there are other resources available and a great opportunity now for some questions. So one, one that came in um, from Megan, thanks Megan, um, is around when when we're wanting when people are wanting to have modifications done through their NDIS funding. Peter, are you aware whether a quote from someone like you guys is enough or do people need to go to their occupational therapist? and get a report from them. Absolutely, you've got it in one. It's generally, generally with, with most circumstances around the NDIS, they require, and things like that require an assessment anyway. Unless it's, unless it's low level off the shelf assistive technology that's less than sort of $1,500 that you can purchase out of your consumable budget, for example, um, 
anything sort any anything that, that that's a major cost and um, you will need to get an assessment for um so um it's and it, it's something that your ot will as part of her as part of her uh, report and assessment to ndis she will contact um after it's narrowed down what equipment you need, she will contact the suppliers directly and get quotes and things like that. So absolutely, your OT is your, your first port of call. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, a question from Shiva, and we didn't really get into this, but options for people who are using a wheelchair for accessing a shower. So that might be that idea of the shower chair where you transfer into a shower chair that's on wheels and then you can be wheeled into the shower. Do you want to make a comment on that, yeah. Peter? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I, I was at the, at the last minute, I actually thought, damn, I didn't put commodes. I didn't put commodes in, the, in any of the slides. Absolutely. So for somebody who's a wheelchair, you might want to look at something like a, a commode, shower chair, which is a shower chair with wheels, big rear wheels and small front ones. Um, commodes are really good. Um, I just use a generic shower chair because I'm actually I'm actually quite mobile and can, and can sort of partly stand when I'm transferring. But for somebody who can't for somebody who can't wait there who's in a wheelchair, a um, a commode is a really good option. Can, and specifically too, if somebody wants to if somebody doesn't want to transfer in their bathroom. So for example. I know of people, for example, that are that 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 um, that are wheelchair users, for example, that will shower first thing in the morning when they get out of bed. So, for example, when you're in bed, you, for example, you might have your manual wheelchair, your day wheelchair, on one side of your bed, and your commode on the other. So, if you're somebody that likes to get dressed in bed, for example, you've got your you, you can transfer from your bed into your commode wheel into your bathroom, do whatever you need to do, come back and then transfer back on your bed, get changed, do what you need to do, and then your day chair's on the other side of the bed. Mm. Mm. So some so processes like that are actually good for people as well. But yeah, no, commode commode's a really good option. We Peter and I went back and forth a couple of times, didn't we, Peter, with the, what the content of today would be, and we were continually finding other things to add, and so we had to draw the line somewhere. But it, yeah. it sets us up well for future programs, I think. <laughs> also, 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 to I think now that we've done the first one, now I can sort of get of an idea, more of an idea on what people are after and what people are, uh, what questions people have answers to. So I think that will help with the next couple. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, that's been fabulous. I think we've reached the end of our questions, but what, what I will also encourage everyone that's online is it doesn't have to stop here. So if you get off the program today and you go, oh, I should have asked a question, by all means, contact Peter contact the team at Assistive Technology Australia or contact MS Connect. Don't feel that you can't follow up with a question afterwards. There's no, no problem with that at all. So thank you, Peter, so much for your time today and your time in preparation for today. It's been a fabulous presentation. I would encourage everyone to stay online. A little, a little survey will pop up and that you'll be asked a couple of questions, but that's really helpful for us in planning future programs. So we've got a couple of more of these lined up for the start of May and the start of June. So we'll look forward to seeing you at future programs. Thanks, Peter, and thanks everyone for being online today. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye for now.